Okay, hi everyone. Thanks very much for, for joining us today for the Careers Inspiration webinar. Um, my name is Olivia uh, and I'll be hosting the webinar today. And this is the, the first in the series of Career Inspiration webinars. The idea behind them really is to introduce you to a few people who've chosen a career in IT, have a chat with them and find out about what they do and their experiences. And that will open up a, a few different options that are out there for you in the future and you'll be able to see a bit about what's involved. So we'll be speaking to people who've taken all different paths in, in technology and, and in education as well. So people who've done degrees, people who've done apprenticeships, internships and so on. So as well as finding out about different jobs in IT, you can also find out about different options for education and for training as well. And also we'll be speaking to people who work in all different kinds of places, so big companies, small companies, and even people that have started up their own companies as well. So today I'm joined by Dean Black, and he'll be speaking about his job, which is making apps. Um, and we're going to have a chat with him for around 10 minutes or a little bit less. Um, there'll be some time at the end, or around five minutes or so for questions. There's no need to wait till the end. If you have a question that you think of at any time, uh, if you go to the right hand side of your screen, you should see a little orange arrow. And if you pop that box out, um, you should see a, a, an option to type in some questions there. Um, and we'll be able to see those and I'll be picking some of those out to ask at the end. So. I think we'll, we'll get started. So thanks, thanks very much, Dean, for joining us today. No problem. Great. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so Great. first of all, I think, um, would you be able to just maybe tell us a bit about your, your job and, and what you do? Sure. Um, so I am a iOS developer at a company called Marvel. It has nothing to do with the comic books, which is what everyone always assumes. Um, what we actually do is we build tools for designers and um, aspiring designers to basically uh, what well, the phrase we like to use is like democratize design. So we want to make like design accessible to um, pretty much everyone. Um, we see so yeah, so we, we make tools so that designers can collaborate or like you can let's say you have no coding skills, but you have an idea for an app or something like that. You can use our platform to create a mock up. Um, and you can like give it to people and get like rapid feedback and like iterate on your designs and things like that. That's great. That's great. And would you be able to tell us about something that you're currently working on or, or that you've recently worked on that's of particular interest to you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think probably um, one of the most popular side projects that I have at the minute um, is a video game that I made uh, for the iOS platform. It's like a retro style beat em up um and yeah it's like it was a, it, it was something that i had just made in my spare time um as um it's just something to do I, I always kind of wanted to make a video game and um i spent like five years building it actually just like in spare time um but when it was released it was uh really rewarding to see people play it and things like that um apple gave it a nod which was like kind of like uh i guess what else could you really ask for um when you're building that right if apple's give it a nod so yeah that's great and and so you said it took um five years to develop that was that because it was on the side how long does it take sort of uh if there's sort of an average time that it takes you to develop something or well that's an interesting question it, i mean i wouldn't say there's necessarily an average time to develop something it really depends what you're trying to develop i mean i could have you could make a you can make whatever you want i could have made a video game in like six months if i wanted to but it was more that um i knew what i was trying to build and it kind of and it's kind of like when you're trying to build something as maybe as big as a video game and then also have a full-time job at the same time it's like you maybe only get one or two hours in the evening or so on the weekend you know you've got to maintain your social life and you've got to try and balance all of this stuff um but that's the reason why it took five years but it, it, for me it was more of a case of i knew what i was trying to achieve with this video game and i could have put it out sooner but i kind of just wanted to make sure it was what i wanted it to be before i put it out yeah, that's great. And um, how did you kind of get into the world of app developing? Was that something you were interested in from when you were younger or was it something you just kind of found your way to by using apps or how did you kind of get into that area? Um, so actually the whole reason I got into coding was because I wanted to build a video game. Uh, I was, I must have been, I didn't know what I was doing. I was about 10 years old um, when I first started to get, get into programming actually. Uh, I had an older brother who was studying computing at college. So he was 18 or so, I was about 10, 11. 
And um, I knew he was like, we had this family computer and he would like, I knew he would make software on it. I, and I, I didn't know how he did it. So I knew I wanted to make something. Um, so I used to like steal his books. And that's how I, like, I got into programming. And that itch to just kind of make a video game kind of just stayed with me until, um, yeah, until recently, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. And and you spoke about um, earlier about it being quite a rewarding thing that you see people kind of using your work. What would you say is the most exciting bits of what you do? What kind of gets you up in the morning? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I think, you know, sometimes it's just chipping away at um, like you have when you start a project, maybe you have like an idea of what you want it to be in the end. Um, and just daily just chipping away at that what you're building I think that is really rewarding like I mean if I, if I had known that the video game was going to take me five years I, I I don't know if I would have necessarily committed to it like that you know what I mean um, but it was more of a case of every day you put in a little bit more work and it makes a little bit more progress and you can see that um, and it's just like I just want to keep this going you know what I mean it's just like progress right it's, I don't know you get better at something and you just want to keep it going yeah yeah definitely and do you have a, a kind of a typical working pattern like certain start and end times for the day um is it monday to friday what do you typically do um so for my uh day job like we're very flexible um i usually work on uh marvel projects between uh like 10 and 6 and i work on my own stuff in the evening and weekends i i, I my sleeping pattern is quite terrible actually i'm not even gonna lie I tend to stay up quite late working on stuff and go to bed like maybe two, three in the morning sometimes, just because like it's very hard when you're like really involved in a, a problem you're trying to solve. Sometimes it can be very difficult to like just pull yourself away and like just go to sleep because the problem just remains in your head and you're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. And it sounds like it's quite flexible anyway. You're able to kind of do what suits you, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. Um, what about your interests outside of work? Do you have any particular hobbies or any projects that you're working on or anything? Yeah, I mean, I love, I really have an interest in art, um, actually. Uh, I always had an interest. In, I mean, I've been around a lot of design people. I haven't worked in the design industry for the last maybe five years. Um, and something about that kind of got me interested in art. And recently, there's this, this new space I've been exploring called generative art, which is basically building, like, drawing or creating art or abstract art using algorithms and like certain bits of randomness um it's kind of i mean i've always like i said i've always kind of been into art but um just i've never had a paintbrush so to speak so like i do have coding skills so this is kind of just like a nice new medium to explore and just try it out i guess yeah, that's cool. And then in terms of your, your education, did you do like computing GCSE or, or degree or anything like that? Is that kind of a path that you followed or did you kind of teach yourself or? Yeah, I mean, so like I was saying, I, I've been, I, I had been coding for a long time already, um, like since I was very young. Um, but I did do a degree in computer science when I at in Leicester. Um, Though, you know, to be honest with you, like I wouldn't necessarily say that having that degree was like a necessity um, to understand. I, I know really great programmers that don't have degrees or anything like that. And, um, you know, like the internet is such an amazing resource right now, like these days, that um, the degree is not, it's not the end all and be all kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so in that case, what kind of tips would you have for people who might be interested in taking a similar route to you? Is there um, any particular things that, or skills that you think um, would be useful for them or, or any, uh, any tips for, for people who might want to take it forward in that way? I think probably the most uh, important thing to remember, particularly with something like coding, or even anything that seems like maybe it's a little bit intimidating is like sometimes you just got to get stuck in. Um, I know like the idea of like the idea of making a video game or making an app or making anything like it, it might be a bit daunting, but once you like start, you like eventually end up building up a toolkit. You'll get better at it, and before you know it, like x amount of time has passed, then you have a video game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and there are some good um tools out there for for people who want to get kind of uh started or or a taster for for making apps so there's um 
yeah. just type the ones into Google and, and don't worry about remembering them or writing them down now, but there's App Inventor, um, which is a good one, that's specifically, I think, for Android. And then there's App Lab, mm. which is quite good. That's, um, they say, most suitable for age 13 plus, but um, if you're right. at that age, then obviously just ask at home. It's more the age restriction because of the, the uh, level of challenge rather than any content in right, there. Right. And there's also apps for good, which have got quite a few online courses um, about lots of different things, not just apps. They've got things on like machine learning as well. So um, if you hold on, uh, viewers, hold on till the end. Um, I'll give you some more information about um, those as well. But we've got quite a few questions um, coming in. And one of the most yeah, popular okay. ones, actually, um, that a few, few people have asked the same kind of question, which is about which is the most useful coding language to learn? Um, to I guess for maybe employability or for or for apps or anything that you kind of see that comes up quite commonly in in your work. Um, yeah, so you know if you're beginning programming, then I would say Python is probably one of the more easy languages to get into. It's um, very loosely typed. Um, it reads almost like English, so it's like a very good intro into programming. Um, Next to that, I mean, Python, you normally use for like scripting. So it, like just building short scripts and things like that. If you're looking for to do stuff more visually, like build a website and that kind of stuff, um, JavaScript is um, really good for that. Uh, so you'll be able to learn that very quickly. It's probably the most common language in the world, I would say. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to add something to that. I can't, it's, it's gone, never mind. But yeah, no, yeah that's JavaScript, fine. Python, those are great places to start. Yeah, brilliant. That's great advice. And um, one person has asked um, in your work at Marvel, kind of how much do you work on your own versus working in a team? Oh, I mean, so at Marvel, a lot of the work is based around teams. Um, you know, like it's it's software is a it's a how would, it's a collaborative effort, right? A lot of the time, especially with and when it comes to companies, like you got you have to work with people like. I mean, I might get assigned to build a feature or something like that, but I still have to work with the design, the, 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 like the person who designed it to understand what it is that they want me to build exactly. Or I have to work with product to see, you know, how, um, how, like how they, how they want to release it or, or whatever. Right. Um, so you, you got to work with all different kinds of people. Um, so I wouldn't say that it's like 80% of the time I'm working on my own. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily approach it like that. I would say it's more like, um, everyone's working together to try and reach the same goal so it's, it's it's really mostly a team effort all the time mm, mm, yeah definitely and um one person has asked uh, an interesting one actually do you ever have copyright issues with the background music that you use in the apps or or anything um not so far anyway but uh hopefully not um no, I mean, I know, like, so for Adventures of Kid, which is the um, video game that I built, uh, the the audio, what that, I actually had hired someone to do the music and the audio, and um, he, a lot of people like the audio, it's like it's got this cool retro funky track, um, and he wanted to release it, the, the person who I hired to make the audio, to make the audio wanted to release it himself separately as like a, an album kind of thing, um, but no, no, no issues or anything like that. Not really. Yeah, that's cool. And um, and probably just for time, so that might be the last question. Uh, what's your favorite part of coding and programming? Uh, <laughs> actually, it's, it's kind of, it, I know. So when you're coding something, sometimes like you'll run into an issue and you're like, this isn't working how I expect it to work. And it's just super, super rewarding to solve those problems when it's just like, I don't know why this isn't working. And this is what I was saying earlier, it was like, it can get to like 2 a.m. and I'm looking at this code and I'm like, this isn't working how it should be working. But I'm not, I, I can't tear myself away from this right now. So um, just investigating that stuff and the, like just having the curiosity, like work out why things aren't doing how they, it's working how they should be working. Um, it's probably, and yeah, like just working that stuff out, it's just like really, really rewarding. It's like when you finish a Sudoku puzzle, it just feels good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah.
Okay, great. We've probably um, run out of time there, but I just want to say, um, well, firstly, I hope you all enjoyed this session and we've actually got a few more coming up. So because you've registered onto this event today, what will happen is you'll get an email tomorrow to say thanks for attending. And in that email, there'll be a link to some of the tools that we mentioned, like App Inventor and stuff, so you can get involved with them. And there will also be information about the next few sessions as well, so you can book onto those. So we're going to try and keep them around the same time um uh, ish weekly so thursdays around 2 30. Um, next week we've got someone who's doing an apprenticeship in cyber security so you'll be able to find out from them a bit about what it's like to do an apprenticeship and a bit about cyber as well um, and there'll also be a link in there to our twitter so you can keep up with any uh, future sessions that we plan as well so thanks very much, Dean, for, for joining us and being today's Thank guest. You. It was really great to, to hear from you. Thanks very much for your time. And um, hope to see lots of you again next week. And in the meantime, take care and stay safe. Thanks very much. Yeah. Cheers.